Welcome back, everybody. It's Paul Maglev here with Steam, uh, Steam Train 5.0! Fulfilling a certain request that I had gotten a while back that I wanted to fulfill, but couldn't fulfill because for the last three months I've been extremely busy with school. The environmental impact assessment course was very complex, and the presentation for my community action project in my climate change course was, uh, very intensive as well, and I think in the third course it was more of a cakewalk, but I think I have all the settings that I want. Uh, almost. I want to do one last thing, set up. That's not the setup I wanted. It was options, that's right. I want it to be daytime all the time, is there- Oh, there it is. Daylight, easy. So I don't have to worry about editing all the dark stuff to make it brighter. I thought I explicitly said that I... Oh gosh. One moment while I get everything set up. Okay, so we're back. We've got everything configured the way I wanted it to, I think. I've got everything the way I wanted it to. Okay, good. That took a while, but... What I wanted to do was go and take a quick look over at this train, because someone requested that I drive this train, and although the game's programmed so that I technically can't, I can still operate the bell and the whistle. Case in point. And apparently when I push those two buttons for the bell and the whistle, that does the bell and the whistle for every train on the map, for some reason. Because game logic, 2017. So yeah, that was that was that. I was really thinking that this train would be heading the opposite direction, but I guess this will give me more time to give you updates because I kind of wanted to start off this this video kind of more like a blog. I mean vlog than I do in other videos because I do give updates, but I feel that. This video has to give a lot more updates than your average video. Because I haven't recorded anything since before spring break, I think. Back in March. Or something. It just feels like quite a while ago and I can't remember where I left off. I think I might have mentioned that I got the Lego set 4559, which is the... Was it Cargo Express or Cargo Railway? I forget which one it is. Not to be mistaken with another cargo set. Or uh, any of the other sets, to be quite honest. But I had that taken care of, cleaned it up, got all the pieces together. It's all good. Uh, after that, I got two passenger trains. Each one of them was identical from Lego over at Target because they were both on sale. And the idea was that I would take both of these sets together and use them to make more passenger cars to go with a train that I already have with the same uh, serial number. So I'll have all the uh, passenger cars I could possibly want or need and it looks like a much more realistic train because of that. Or at least that's the plan, because the original set just has a front, a back, and a center passenger car. With the front having some space for passengers, the back one having some space for passengers, but they had the cockpits for the uh, operators that are aerodynamically shaped, and... Because the set only has one passenger car and I want more passenger cars, the best thing I could think of was to just get duplicates of the set, so why not? I've seen other people do it before, or at least I think. Unless they went about it the other way around, but... Uh, that is going to be a story for another day entirely, because some people just buy individual passenger cars from a set online through eBay, and that's just not cost-effective to me. It's not efficient, because they can go for as much as $40 for something that I value at way less. But moving on from that, there's also 
uh, the updates from uh, the toy conventions I went to. Both of them were technically identical because they were run by the same group of people. I think it was this one store that sells toys and comics not too far from my home. But they basically set it up twice, once before the spring break, and then once before the Memorial Day weekend, because for me today, I'm recording this on Friday of the Memorial Day weekend. And as far as I can tell, the first time around I couldn't find anything train related that tickled my fancy. The second time around I did. And what I got was... What did I get? I got quite a few LEGO sets that were not train related because I felt that the only LEGO set that was related to trains was too expensive or overpriced I should say and I didn't think I would get it unless I expected myself to be completely scalped but it's from the way the person who was selling it described it it sounded like the person who was selling it got scalped a lot harder because they bought it off of eBay and if you're an adult fan of LEGO you would know that the last place you go to buy LEGO is on eBay you gotta go to Bricklink for those good deals but apparently he got it for way more than it should have been and he was selling it for like ten dollars more and that profit margin doesn't sound very conducive to a successful business, even if it's on the side. So I asked him why he did that to himself, and he said it's because he's got such low overhead. And I didn't know what he meant by that until about a week later, but it basically it just didn't cost him that much to actually uh, maintain his side gig, I guess. And as far as I can tell, the only thing that was train related that I got was this one little set from Bachman. It was an N-scale train, a, an exact duplicate of something that was laying around the house for the last 20 years that was far worse for wear than it ever could possibly be. So I thought, this one's mint, right? And the person who sold it to me is like, yeah, I, I bought this and I never used it. So. I'm gonna get this because the other duplicate of the sets that I had growing up I completely messed up because I was a toddler. And when you have a high precision uh, replica that's a fraction of the size of the real thing, chances are if you're a toddler and you get your grubby little hands on it, either one of two things is going to happen. Or both. And that is, you're gonna have a good time, and the second one is that you're gonna break something, and boy did I have both. To be quite honest. Because it's virtually non-existent at this point, the only thing that survived were the passenger cars from that old set, so I thought I should get this set as a sort of reparations, I guess, for past transgressions. <laughs> Because when you're a little kid, you don't know the consequences of your actions, even if they're immediate. And I can look back now and realize that there were some things that I wanted to make up for, and this was just one of them. Even if it was just to make up for myself. And we just jump cut straight over to wherever this is. Which was kind of strange, but this train is supernatural because game logic, so it's just not coded as realistically as it possibly could be. And that's one of the reasons why I switched over to this train because of the request I had. Oh, yeah, I already mentioned that. Was there anything else I wanted to mention that was train related? I think there was, and it was the fact that Caltrain which is run by a state agency called Caltrans, which maintains the interstate 
uh, roadways in the state of California. Uh, they got a hundred million dollar deal to completely electrify uh, the Caltrain fleet, which will substantially reduce the amount of energy needed to actually get uh, the same amount of work done. Because it's a lot more efficient to run on electricity than it is to run on a diesel-electric locomotive, because a diesel-electric locomotive is really heavy. It's filled with diesel fuel, which in itself is limited in supply, and it emits carbon emissions, which I've already known for most of my life is a big no-no for the atmosphere. So that's going to be good. It'll substantially reduce the carbon emissions associated with public transit on heavy rail systems in my portion of uh, California and the Silicon Valley. The way it was written, though, in the newspaper, it sounded like the money was in jeopardy because there was one last step before all the actions would go through to actually engage the projects necessary to electrify everything. And, uh, as far as I can tell, this was over 20 years in the making, because we were thinking of doing this 20 years ago, if not earlier, and for some reason it just got delayed. Because politics, I don't know. So, now that's going to run a lot smoother, a lot cleaner, it's probably not going to be as noisy either, because if you've heard the, uh, if you've heard the diesel-electric locomotives that they use at Caltrans, you would know that they're extremely loud. Like, they're so loud you can hear the combustion engine running from a station platform on the freeway to the light rail system that's hooked up to the Tamian station for the VTA, which is another entity entirely, and that has its own problems, but... To go from one station to the next station, and to be able to hear it from all the way over there, uh, I think that's pretty loud. And ear-shattering as well. So we don't have to worry about that. Uh, what else was there? Train updates related. Because the high-speed project's pretty much just kind of uh, sitting down like a lame duck at this point. I was really hoping it would be moving further along, but there's still a lot of litigation uh, taking place as to the placement of where uh, the rail system will be, because if my memory is correct, there were some people suing over the fact that some of the planned routes by the engineers would cut down some legacy trees, and then in the state of California, a legacy tree is a tree that's over a hundred years old. Something that's an endemic species like an oak tree or a California buckeye. Because apparently that's a thing. You didn't think we had buckeyes, did you? But apparently we do in this little place we call the California Floristic Province. And that's what you get when you live in one of the world's biodiversity hotspots. Not that you know it when you come here, to be quite honest. It looks just nothing like it, to be quite honest. But as far as I can tell, uh, progress has been made towards uh, all sorts of things. My semester was, on a, on a completely tangential note, was very intense. So I wasn't able to record anything during that time frame because I wanted the Community Action Project presentation to be good. Or great, rather. In a competition that got into second place for my class, and uh, the environmental impact report group project that I was working on in my environmental impact assessment course, I wanted that to look and function properly as well, and the third course wasn't as difficult, water resources management, because it was pretty comprehensive and pretty laid back. But I still had to work on that as well. And long story short, I just didn't have the time to record things. 
So I'm glad to be back. And you think to yourself, what could I have possibly missed on YouTube that happened within the last, how you say, uh, three months? Well, apparently there's this thing called the Adpocalypse that's happened, and as far as I can interpret it, as far as I can interpret it, uh, the Adpocalypse is basically a bunch of advertisers pulling out of uh, Google AdSense, which runs on Google-based websites like YouTube. And the reason they pulled out was because they were offended by some of the material that was being put out. And now there's an algorithm in place that's only going to help financially incentivize the kinds of content that's more kid-friendly, I guess you can say. And we just jumped to this other train for some reason. Because this flipped around and went into the other direction. Uh, in a way that makes absolutely no sense. But I think I've spent enough time kind of explaining that. At this point in time, I'd like to apologize for having to skip a decent portion of this video and consolidate it down into a few seconds. But I was beginning to talk about things that didn't make any coherent sense. This is probably the result of me not having enough practice. So instead of having to put you through the torture of having to watch me put my foot inside of my mouth several times, instead I'll just skip. So anyway, back to you, Jethro. So thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next video. And until then, take care, stay awesome, stay true to yourself, and remember to never give up. Bye, everybody.